Uh, All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, we're excited to have John with us. John, when was it you did your last webinar? Been about a year or so? I think it was actually a, almost a year today. Yes. Okay, nice. Nice. If you haven't had a chance to check out that, I would highly, highly recommend going back I think it's on our YouTube channel. We also have it on our website with all the rest of our webinars as well. Um, excited to have you back, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. We're going to hold, uh, for the participants, we're going to hold the Q&A until the end. So if you want to, as we go, drop in questions, it might come up. John will be answering them at the end. Uh, we are going to be recording the webinar for those unable to attend and for those that want to go back and, and take a look. Uh, we'll be also sending out resources with a follow-up email, um, giving a little more, which will give you the deck and also some additional information that John wants to pass along. So with that, I will pass it on to John. Looking forward to it, buddy. Thanks so yeah, thank much you. for doing this. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, welcome today, everyone. Uh, my name is John Gibbings. I'm a, uh, one of the SEO consultants here at Hive Digital. For today's training, it's titled Buy, Buy, Buy where we, uh, in, the goal of this is to increase e-com uh, website, just revenue generation, looking at the uh, search results and understanding what really makes our products perform and seeing uh, so that they really meet the end user um, and your just ideal customer. So I, like I said before, I'm one of the, uh, <laughs> I'm one of the consultants here at digital where our uh, aim is to we strive to create a better world by working with, um, you know, a good meaning and, and just uh, well-to-do. Uh, well, well, I mean, <laughs> we're here to make the world a better place. My name is John Givings. Um, I'll go with that again, just going over these slides. And I, I've been here with Hive Digital for about eight years now, uh, give or take about a decade full of experience. Um, and a lot of what I, I, I focus on is content strategy, <clears throat> where I work to improve the, um, the visibility of the content and the overall value that a website provides to its user base. Um, I leverage the, the search results and some of the information you can you know, glean from those, as well as third-party tools, which I'm happy to uh, go through later in this, this slide deck. And um, one of the things I want to discuss as well is the evergreen content lifecycle where as you develop content for your website, you start to revisit it over time and make sure that uh, you leave it polished, it's, it stays fresh and applicable to your, your main user base. Now a little bit more about myself. I'm an MBA, um, husband and girl dad. I have a beautiful daughter, Paisley, um, a fantastic, amazing and beautiful wife, Brooke. I have a daughter on the way. Uh, we are just about a month away from being a month away. Um, so we're, we're trying to get prepared as best we can there. Very, very excited to, to meet young Aubrey. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later, but um, <laughs> I'm excited. Maybe not too soon. So as far as today's webinar, um, we want to identify the type of pages that Google will identify and recognize. And these are page types and what Google will do, what signals you can glean from that to identify what is preferred and what we can try and do uh, to get that increased ranking and search exposure. I want to share with you some tips on how you can improve your site's navigation and also talk about the user journey. And then lastly, I'd like to look at some signals that we can provide to Google based off your user, gener uh, your user base with reviews, some um, feedback, um, and some star ratings. That way we can try and reaffirm the uh, purchase you know, decision that you know, your customers are looking for. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more later. So for the overview, I am excited to be here. Uh, this will be recorded as uh, Chef shared earlier. And um, <laughs> you may hear my dog, she's gonna be excited uh, to be here as well. Mail generally comes around this time. Uh, so if she speaks up or you hear in the background, uh, just don't be alarmed. So to start, we have search engine optimization. And I like to kind of go over a definition of what that is. Uh, generally, it's visibility for an individual landing page or a set of landing pages in the, uh, the search results that are organically driven. 
Um, this meaning that someone types in the query, they have a question that they're looking for, um, and you have a page that shows up. Now, this is a quick example of what you could typically see in an e-commerce search result. We have the paid search ads, paid ads at the top. We have some SERP features. So you might see SERP at search engine result page. Um, we have the features with that here. We have a quick answer. People also ask, and I have some more examples later on. To the right, we have the Google shopping ads. And then at the bottom are the search engine results. Generally, the, the blue links, we have a couple other you know, bits of information included in there as well. So a couple caveats with search engine optimization. Uh, it, it's a game of practice. Changes to the website don't immediately take effect um, on the, the World Wide Web. It takes a little bit of time for Google to understand it, uh, digest it, and then present that information in a meaningful way to users. With that, you can also look at the search results to determine what Google understands as the main intent behind the search query. So if you're looking for one thing versus another, what type of page would Google typically rank? And with that information, you can start to tailor your own content and how you position yourself as a brand to meet that query. So the number three is a big one. Uh, we have Google actively camouflaging the organic search results. And I'll, I'll provide some examples further on, but what the important takeaway there is Organic search results are more and more difficult to present and compete as the real estate begins to draw back when Google starts showing paid ads, the search features, um, and a number of other things that we can typically see in the organic search result. That doesn't mean that it's, it's typically bad because you can succeed in each of these opportunities, but it's something to consider. And lastly, we have the, uh, the Google Domain Diversity Update. And that is where Google will typically show two landing pages per website for any given query. Um, and that really kind of compounds this issue here where we have less real estate and some organic results. I'll break that down a little bit further. So before we get into it, what does Google see and what does Google present from a landing page? And that's the metadata. Here I have some examples of what you can typically see. We have the URL listed up top. We have the meta description, the page title, and then the, the rich snippets. Down below, you can see the star rating. You can see the number of reviews for a product, the average price, and whether it's in stock or not. So as far as the title tag best practices, I always like to leave people with useful information, something that's actionable from these webinars. What can you take away and uh, really, you know, make your own site better. And here's some best guide, you know, some best practices for that. Ideally, we want to have the main phrase to the leftmost portion of the, the page title, followed by any secondary keywords or categories, and then the brand name. Try and keep that uh, succinct across the entire site. Generally, the optimal length will be 50 to 60 characters, but the real measurement is the number of pixels. And that's the, the total width. That's about 600 pixels. The meta description is very similar to that, but it's not quite a rankings factor like the page title. Um, it's the banner advertisement for your page to convince people to click into the site. Generally, it's about 150, 60 characters before it starts to concatenate and be chopped off. You might see garden here at the bottom right with the three little dots. That's what typically happens when the, the meta description is too long. We found that about 50 characters is best. Be quick, succinct, and to the point to draw people in. Now that we've talked about what Google typically shows, I, I want to talk about content and the, the multiple different types of content that you can have on the site. Um, as your site ages, you begin to create individual pieces that help to supplement the main purpose and intent, which typically in e-commerce is to, you know, draw people to your products, communicate the value to that, and then guide their um, decision-making through to the point of uh, purchase or conversion. 
And with that, we have a number of different options you can look at, video, visual, which would be a slide deck like this, blogs for the text or individual product pages, PDFs, which if you have something highly technical, that might be something where users take that information offline. And then something that, that's usually socially driven, like a, a quiz or a test. Now with all of that, it, it's important to note that there's been research in the past couple of years where the majority, as in more than 50% of all queries performed result in a zero click search. This means that users are coming to Google, they're typing in a search query and they're gaining the, the answer they're looking for before they even hit a, a site and then they leave. And that's where search features are becoming really important. Um, Google is taking information from your landing page, presenting it in a new way so that users are no longer required to come to your website. It's something to be mindful of. Um, and there are a couple of things that you can, you can glean from that as well. <clears throat> Do users come to the search result? Do they type something in, realizing it's not a great fit, and they go back and try and search for a new fit, like something else, or they decide that they can just drive down the street to the big box store and buy it there? All things that we need to consider and look at just a little bit more closely. Now, with e SEO for e-commerce, there are three things um, that I'd like to keep in mind as we go through this webinar. And that is with your website, we, we need to build affirmation, trust, and direction for your users. Once users come to the site, that, that's great and all, but what they do once they're there is almost just as important. And that's where user experience comes in, into play. How have you built things? How have you laid it out? Um, are you, do you prescribe to greedy marker syndrome where they come to their, your website and it's buy now, buy now, buy now. Sometimes it turns people off. Sometimes people want to shop without being sold to. SEO goes beyond product visibility. If you ever want to know how to do run an e-commerce site well, look at Wayfair. Um, it's a highly visual platform where they go through and here's some examples of a landing page. It's summertime here. I'm always looking at bettering my backyard. Uh, just making it a little bit more comfortable. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do that as well. So here's an example of the garden page. That's highly visual. People can come in and window shop. And if you're not sold on some of the categories they have here, well, then as you go down the page, you start looking at popular picks. You can start to see review ratings. You can see things that are on sale. You can get an example of how it could look in your yard. You know, if you have a green thumb or aspiring to have one, and then going back to, to you know, the affirmation and the trust, here at the bottom, you have the shipping guarantees and the value added call to actions. Now, once you have your website built, it's really important to start to build authority around your site and make sure that you're putting your products and your product categories and your homepage in a position that you know just builds value and supports each other and that's where link building comes into play now most people when you hear link building think externally um, but i'd argue that it's also just as important to build internally google sees it roughly the same but that might be a, a whole another conversation um, <laughs> entirely so one of the things that i really like to talk to is propping up the, the content that we have on our site through link building. So we have blog posts. If they're talking about a product category, link over to it. Make sure that you're, you're sending the authority through to the final landing page with relevant anchor text by link building. Um, as your site ages and you have the ability to, um, you can start getting you know, some PR mentions or there are other strategies entirely. Get the, the links pointing from other adjacent and non-competing sites that can reference you and then send some link love over to your, your website um, and just prop you up a little bit more. There are other strategies as well, and one of those is or breadcrumbs. Um, here, number three, just above the product name is a breadcrumb. Generally, these are linked to category pages from your product page or any number of uh, page templates on your site 
that help guide the user back if they realize they've gone too far into your site and want to navigate further. They can click to their home. You can go to your category page, which would be the product category, or you can click to the product itself. These are all linking ways that you can build up authority and prop up the site. The main navigation is one as well, where you go and you list your most valuable product categories or products, if they're bestsellers, or the, the supporting content as well. Now, I had mentioned that I like to delve into content um, as a content strategist, and I would like to talk a little bit about the five essential content types for e-commerce websites. We have blog posts. Um, you know, that, that's the most common for sure. People are writing about the product or the type of products you have or an organization. That's fantastic. Um, one of the tips I'd like to offer people is if you have a sales team and get commonly asked questions, write a blog post about it. Make your life and their life easier by having that information available to share with your customers. You have product demos and videos, customer reviews, social media interactions, and FAQs as well. What are you doing to support your website and your products and really communicate the value through to your users? What, you know, here's an example. You have a buyer's guide. Um, we have the Father's Day gift set for the golf enthusiast. Uh, there are a number of ways and, and types of content that you can produce. Uh, we are happy to help you with that as well. But I want to offer some pro tips. Write a story that's in not a boring article. Make sure that you guide the user through to the end. Keep them on the page. Allow them to find something that's relevant and click through. Use internal links to drive authority of the product categories. I touched on that a little bit earlier. And then make sure that when you link to these pages, you use relevant anchor text. And then that's typically the blue link that you, you provide in the, uh, the hyperlink to click over. Um, that phrase is attributed to the destination page. So if you have an adjacent uh, article on the site and you're speaking about widgets and you click through to the widget page, that term widget is attributed to the final location. Something to consider as you, uh, you start to build up the links internally on the site. I talked about the evergreen content lifecycle. This is a strategy that we really love to, to kind of stress to our clients. And it, it allows us to revisit content over time and make sure that it's applicable. Uh, once it's published, once it collects dust and sits there unused on the site, sometimes it's good to, to revisit it every six months to a year to kind of freshen it up a bit. Are there stats in there from 2018 that are no longer applicable? Um, are there other mentions that, you know, just are out of date? Maybe they speak to a product line you don't carry anymore. You can repurpose that content and point it to something that actually is going to convert at the end of the day. Point to your, you know, your best revenue generating content. There are ways you can revisit content in at a set frequency to where you can continue to allow it to, to, provide, uh, to provide value. Maybe share it socially. There are a number of things you can do. Now, going back to the, you know, the three points I, I caught out earlier, building affirmation, trust, and direction. Patty Mugan, um, he, he's one of the gentlemen that actually made this wireframe here, and I wanted to provide uh, a call out to him just so that we're, we're referenced. Um, I have him linked to at the bottom of this article as well, or the webinar, but I really like what he wrote here about the product description. Don't think about SEO copy. Think about accurately and succinctly describing your product. Include use cases, bullet point summaries, and technical information to help you, the user understand the product. And he, he goes into a lot of detail here about how to lay out a product page. You can see that we have user-generated content here um, that helps you know, with the affirmation. You have users that are happy providing reviews, questions, and answers. Um, that way, users likely ask the same questions over and over again. They get that affirmation that, you know what, maybe I do want to buy this. I like it. You have the trust factor. You have the visa verified. Um, you have other information. And then also the customer reviews. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, it sounds good. I'm not going to be cheated if I try and press the buy button. And then lastly, the call to actions and the direction. Maybe they're not ready to buy yet. 
Maybe they want to find out more information. We have the product videos down below. We have the, pro the related products. Maybe this isn't what they want to buy, but it's close. They can start to, to find that information out. You have the three little uh, images below. Maybe they want to get a different angle or figure out how it can fit in their yard. It all builds on each other. Google rarely talks about um, best practices and guidelines for e-commerce, but recently they came out speaking specifically to videos for e-commerce. And I've provided a little clip here. I won't read it all, but the, the highlight is that video is becoming increasingly common on e-commerce sites. And I've bolded the main example here. You can use the same video multiple times in your site to provide different direction and value to users. If you have a how to clean your brand coffee maker, you know, it might attract different uh, traffic than a product page selling that coffee maker. Consider that. How do you share that online? Do you put it on YouTube? Do you share it socially? Um, think about how your customers use it. And especially as you're trying to market and sell that coffee maker, you want to make sure that you address users after the fact, after they've been there. Now I already converted. Now, as far as video hosting platforms, I've added this here because let's say you have a video, but you don't know what to do with it. Generally, we like to recommend that um, users or, or web, or, so owners of a website, they host it on a third party platform. Um, generally, that would be YouTube, but there are multiple use cases for all of these. Um, it, YouTube is a Google property. And because of that, um, you know, the ease to embed it on the site is pretty straightforward, um, but it's not a catch-all solution. I provided a couple of examples here on the most used web hosting platforms and a quick little snippet of how you can embed that code from YouTube. It's just a little bit of HTML code you add to the site. Now, once you have the videos on, you know, that, are, that are hosted, um, you can provide value to users in a, a number of ways. For here, we have a client selling knuckle bandages, and we had an article that, that performs pretty well uh, about how do you apply it. You can see here that it's pulled in, you know, has a quick little thumbnail for it. Um, hopefully, you're not fixing your thumbnail, <laughs> but uh, there, there are a number of videos that we have about how to put on a knuckle bandage or a secondary video, how to put on a fingertip bandage with some people also ask questions down below. Now, going back to fixing products and giving information about videos, um, there, there are a number of strategies you can pursue. I have an insect trap outside and I want to replace the light bulb. They have a three month lifespan. You can annotate the content for the video by going on each of the slides and then adding a little bit of information. And you can do it in a way that Google actually present that for you so you can build some trust as a brand. Here's two examples. One, the bug trap, and then two, how do you, uh, you know, add chemicals to your pool to treat it? Going back to the, the search results to drive and identify strategies for the type of information that's being shown, it, Google will honestly be pretty straightforward with it. Here, you can research lawnmowers, you can research golf clubs. There are a number of different ways you can you know, create content for this. Is it a product comparison? Is it a buying guide? Or is it how to fix? Here's another example. Um, and it's uh, especially related to e-commerce. You can have these carousels of products based on the category. And what's really important in the takeaway here Google is doing the job to identify the type of content and feature sets that you need to present uh, for your product for it to succeed. We have the name, we have the cost, and the reviews. Those are some of the you know the three big things here. Um, further down, you have a short little description. You have some of the features in the bottom with a link over to it. Here's some other examples from the search results that you can consider, and they kind of blend. Um, we have the ads for shopping for a pool. Uh, you have popular products that are sold where Google's pulling in the schema data. And then Google allows you to refine your search 
by a number of features that are commonly searched for by users. Now, and one thing I want to cover before we move on, it's important to, to identify here at the bottom these additional search um, avenues. Google will go in and start to look at, let's say, subcategories based on what users are searching for. And that's really the big takeaway from the search results. Uh, Google is actively listening to users' search and looking for products to tailor the search and make sure that they're serving the best landing pages. That, that's really the takeaway here is when you're trying to look at your content, just type it into Google, look at what pages are being shown and what type of product variations are available. Start considering how you can present the information on your website uh, to provide additional uh, value to your users. Now, optimizing content for the search results. Specifically speaking about schema markup, this is the additional information you can provide on your website about your product page so that Google doesn't have to land on that product page and then decipher what information needs to be shown. Here's an example of frequently asked questions. Now, this is a little dated uh, as Google has been changing the number of FAQs that they're showing in the, the search results, but it's still applicable at the end of the day. These are you know, frequently asked questions. This is, you can build content for this and provide that value to your users. Organization schema is another big one. Everyone here has a brand. Um, present that so you can get the knowledge panel. You have the ID, the type, the name, URL, and logo. We, we have it all here. If you're a local business, that's even more important. If you have foot traffic coming in and you're trying to sell online, you have a lot of information. You have the address. How do people find it? What's the price of this? Um, what, what type is it? You have the image and then hours of operation and awards. This, you know, it could be food left on the table for a lot of people, a lot of websites. Present this information to your users. Take the legwork out of it. Then we have product schema. Being this is an e-commerce um, presentation, it's really important to, to consider what type of value and information you provide to each of the, the products you sell. We have the stock is in price, product name, reviews, rating, and there's a whole list of these as well that we can include at the end of the video um, or the end of the webinar for you to review. So with that, thank you all so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's wonderful that we've had these over the past year, just getting a chance to, to talk with everyone. I, I really hope one day we can do this in person. Um, and I'd like to open the floor up for any questions. Um, and I guess I'll go through these last slides about the team real quick, and then we can jump into that. This is Hive Digital. We um, have actually been adding a, a number of members to the team. Um, we have one that's missing here in this slide. But what we do, we offer web analytics services to where we can determine what users are doing once they get on the site and where they're coming from. Search engine optimization, which I, I've spoken to today, and um, we have a number of webinar sources for all of these as well. We have paid advertising and social media marketing. Here are a number of my resources based off of today and uh, Patrick Moody's uh, cheat sheet for e-commerce as well. Thank you all. Awesome, buddy. Thank you. That was uh, fantastic. I think I uh, actually enjoyed that as much, if not more, than your previous one. That was really, really helpful. Thank you. We do have a couple of questions, it looks like. Let's see. The first one, when it, when it is good that content gets pulled into featured snippets as opposed to someone clicking the link in the SERP to visit my website? Oh, sure. When Go ahead. Um, the, the best takeaway, I believe, is with a, from a branded perspective. Um, if you have a quick answer of how to fix this or how to apply, um, Ideally, we'd like to have people click through to the, through to the site at any given time, um, to be honest. But it, it provides us with, quote, unquote, the zero position. That lets us have our name next to an answer so we can present ourselves as a subject matter expert 
specifically related to that product. Um, that would, that's when I would say it's most applicable is just by providing that information to your users and having the brand exposure. Okay, and I see right. that. I see the next one. Should I write SEO content for my e-commerce e collection landing pages? That's a great question. Um, and it's actually highly debated uh, fairly recently. A lot of e-commerce websites for their like collections pages, uh, their category pages, they would go and create a cornerstone uh, landing page design where you have the products listed, then you have a how-to guide and long form content. Um, and recently Google has started to identify that that content should be in separate locations. That if Google has a hard time understanding whether or not a e-commerce category page is a category page or an informational based page, they'll generally ignore it. So it's usually a best practice to pull all of the informative copy off of the landing page and link back to the e-commerce e page. Um, but you do wanna have a little bit of information on your collection landing pages, the title, we sell this collection. And then a little snippet, um, you know, probably further down the page saying, this is a, a quick description of what we offer, but you can also provide some quick links there to relevant categories um, or product features that people may be looking for that are adjacently related to the product you're trying to sell. Okay, I see another one. Any tips how to prioritize, prioritize product order in the main navigation? That's a great question. Um, I, would, I would recommend looking at you know, the revenue generated by product or product category. And if you get, um, if that's your, your breadwinner, um, consider, highlighting that over some of your other products. Now you may get a lot of visibility for it, but people just aren't converting. Um, there is value in having that, but at the end of the day, you want to prioritize traffic that will be likely to convert. Or it may be a situation where people are shopping on your site, but it takes them a long time to get to the point of sale. We have a, a client that operates with SaaS uh, platform technology and there is a two year buying cycle that we've identified. So between the first touch of coming to the site to learn about it, it generally takes two years for users to convert. And I believe the last question is, can schema help my site rank higher? Um, I'm gonna say that is an indirect no, but schema helps provide some visibility through to the website. Um, it, it provides users with more information to click into your landing page. Um, it's indirect in that it doesn't provide a direct ranking signal, but over time as users click through to your site and you're more apt to bring users in, that information is deemed valuable by Google and actually allows your page to rank better. So it's kind of a, it depends answer, um, but I, I will say that schema is helpful and allowing your site to perform better. And with that, I'm happy to take any more questions. Um, I'll leave it open for a minute. Okay. And let's see. Okay. What's the best keyword research tool to use for your competitor research? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I hope you don't hate me if I say Google just is a fantastic resource. Just typing in the search result, going and looking at what users are, are searching for. Um, there are a number of free tools out there. One that offers a lot of value for its price point is SEMrush or SimRush. Um, that is an extremely valuable tool. You can go in, you can track keywords, you can start doing competitor research. Um, that, that's one of my favorites. And then looking at Google Search Console to identify what traffic your page is earning uh, based on the, the, the keywords available and the, the general organic search. So 
um, to revisit that, that question, what's the best keyword research tool out there? I like Google SERPs. That way you can go in and see what's ranking. You can use SCMrush for competitor data and then Google Search Console to re like just to, to revisit your own organic uh, search data and use that to compare yourself against the competition. Okay, I think we have one or two more that came in. Fantastic. What are some good tactics to improve con conversion on products that aren't getting much play? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, you can call them out more on the site, having them linked to. Um, it, it may be that they are difficult to find. If it takes a product, if it takes a user four or five clicks to get to a specific product page, that's not a direct path and not very helpful for the users to find the final product. Um, you can share it socially, try and build some, some talk around that as well. Um, or you present it on a number of different category pages. Increase the exposure and visibility to it. Try and build the value around the product. Maybe you need a blog post to, to describe how users can benefit from having it. And then I see we have one more. How can I analyze and prioritize internal links? Is there a tool that can help with this? Yes. Um, that, that's a great question. There are a number of strategies you can use for that. SEMrush and Ahrefs, I believe they have internal linking strategy tools. Um, and all of these do is you can do this from Google Search Console as well. If you start identifying your main product lines or even at a higher level, your most visible keywords, you go in and you start looking at what pages are getting visibility or talk about this keyword. So if you have a widget category and you go into Google Search Console to identify this widget category, you can see that there might be multiple different page types talking about widget category. Um, at the end of the day, your product category is really where you'd like people to drive to, but maybe they aren't ready there yet. You know, going back to the greedy marketing syndrome, um, maybe people want to find out more information so you can share the internal links. Um, so to, to kind of revisit that, how do you analyze and prioritize internal links on the site? It depends on the page type. If it's a informational page learning about the product, maybe you link to similar content about learning about the product. And then as they get closer to, well, do I want a green widget or a red widget? You can provide a link over to your category page. Um, and it really, as long as you're speaking about the subject and linking to uh, adjacent content, um, speaking specifically to it, I believe that you're doing it right. Um, but make sure that you're, you're focusing on your breadwinners, ones that you know will succeed um, and do all that you can to try and drive authority. Just don't, don't jam the buy now option in their face and um, you know, be kind of abrasive to your, your users once they get to the site. Fantastic questions. Really great questions. All right, any more? Looks like that is it. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Again, John, thank you so much, buddy. Really, really appreciate all of the course. effort. It's really great stuff, really great stuff. We'll be sending out the recording and the deck that John used, including the resources that you saw at the end of the deck. This is actually our last webinar for a bit. We're gonna take a little break and actually do something we're really excited about. We're gonna be uh, doing a round table of sorts with four or five of our consultants uh, talking about a specific topic. Next month, we're gonna be talking about keyword research, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, we're not gonna be doing those live. And so instead we'll be sending those out via email um, and on our YouTube channel as well. So make sure you sign up for our email list and we'll be sending that out sometime in July. Otherwise, hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day. John, thanks again, buddy. Yeah, of course. Thank you all.